Hi everyone and welcome to my first entry into the uh, kit build challenge for the Great Guitar Build Off 2022. So as I just said, it's my first entry. I've actually got another entry which is this Strat style guitar here. Um, that's a completely separate build though, so there's a separate series on YouTube and there'll be a separate Super Edit and whatnot for that. Assuming I can complete both Super Edits in time, because as I film this, it is the 24th of September and I've not started either Super Edit. There we go, that's how it is. This guitar actually was my second ever kit build. I'll put up an image on screen of my first one, which is what the strap there replaces actually. So like I say, it was my second ever build. But I think I kind of got ahead of myself and started designing this. Right after the first build, which was after last year's GGBO. And I kind of, yeah, I think I pushed myself too far and didn't really take into account how difficult things would be with my complete lack of experience, knowledge, not having the proper tools or even a workshop. You know, most of the work I do is in the garden. And yeah, I didn't really take that into account. And my design was really, really ambitious. It's actually quite interesting because the design is quite similar to what Ben has discussed doing on his GGBO build. So essentially, this was the sort of original idea where what you have is a acoustasonic style guitar with an inlaid top, but also the back would have been inlaid. And rather than gluing the back in, I would have actually screwed it in so that you can remove that as a back plate to access everything on the inside and because it was built from a kit you know i would have to modify the existing pickup cavities to take the p90s i wanted to use ahead of the competition i started making some templates which looked a bit like these the problem i faced is i built those before i actually got the kit and when the kit showed up it didn't match the profiles I'd use for those templates. And what would have happened is the cut around the outside of the body, so if I go back to that image quickly, the sort of lip that you would see around the outside of the sort of the acoustasonic style thing wouldn't be even. And in my testing that just looked horrendous. And I thought it would be quite difficult to make a new set of templates that match that body perfectly. So I sort of started redesigning the guitar. And I think this was in the very first video in the series. I ended it by basically proposing two options and asking for feedback on what to go with. And those two options, I'll show you now quickly. So this is one of them which is the one that basically I ended up doing, but with some modifications. And there is the second option. So basically the first option would be to have a pit, pit guard essentially, and to route out a bigger cavity inside the guitar and the pit guard would cover up the additional routing needed to fit P90s into a standard tele style kit. With the second option, I would essentially reduce the thickness of the body and then put a top on there and hollow out most of the inside of the body so that it'd be a you know, semi-hollow style guitar. Now I opted for option one partially because well the experience with that kit and you know not fitting the templates, I didn't want to have to deal with anything too complicated at that point. I mean Bearing in mind, when I started this project, I had, well, this was essentially the first routing I'd ever done. So yeah, I, I wanted to keep it quite simple. So the idea was to go with a pick guard like that. After choosing to go with the pick guard design, I decided to iterate on that pick guard design because that one was 
the one I presented in that first episode was thrown together in like a matter of an hour or two and I wasn't particularly happy with it so I decided to sort of explore that quite a bit and went through dozens and dozens of options and this is the one I settled on. So the idea with this pit guard was to reduce the size of it a little bit because I didn't like quite how big the original one was. But I had this idea to sort of have a fake sound hole in the middle there between the pickups. I ended up going away from doing that, but it was an interesting idea that I liked, liked the idea of. So that basically covers the design, the concept and the history. And now I'd like to quickly talk about where the stuff has come from, the woods, the materials, the parts, hardware, electronics, etc, etc. So I guess we'll start with the kit itself. So the body and neck was a kit from Allegri. Um, so it's roasted maple neck and fretboard. It's gorgeous actually. Um, you can sort of see the figuring in the roasted maple fretboard there. It looks awesome. Back of the neck looks really good too. So yeah, really like that. And the body itself is a, I think it's two pieces of order. Might be three, can't remember now. Um, yeah, it's a really nice piece of order though. And yeah, it looks really nice. In terms of hardware, it's a mix of hardware from Northwest Guitars and Allegri. Um, all just, you know, their standard stuff in black. Apart from the bridge is a Wilkinson short style bridge. And the tuners are Wilkinson what are they, Easy Lock, I think they're called. Which are perfectly adequate. They're not great, but they're okay. In terms of electronics, this is where it was quite interesting. So I really tried to push on this one to, to keep some of those original ideas that I had in that, you know, acoustasonic sort of flavoured guitar. So the idea was actually to replace the saddles here with a piezo pickup and to have the full piezo pickup system in here as well. Now, I haven't actually done that on the finished guitar here because I simply ran out of time, particularly with two builds running. Yeah, it just didn't happen. But also I had technical problems. In fact, it probably makes sense to go to these pickups first. So the P90s you see here are Fishman Fluence P90s. They're the Greg Cox Signature Edition. Gristletone P90s, I guess they're called also. And they are awesome. And Fishman provide really, really good documentation about these Fluence pickups. And I've also got the Fluence battery pack in here, which you can see the sort of charging point there. Um, and they provide good documentation on that too. So that was relatively easy to wire up together. However, Fishman's documentation on their power chip, which is basically a preamp for a piezo, and the blending sort of system with the magnetics. Yeah, their documentation on that is terrible. It is atrocious. And whilst I think I may have had the actual wiring correct, in originally the um, battery that I received from Fishman was faulty. And I only realized this after I sort of you know, I was diagnosing this problem for days and days and days, trying to figure out what was going on, why it wasn't working, etc. And essentially, I only narrowed it down to the battery pack. By the time I had already sort of removed the power chip and the piezo from the system and just gone back to the P90s. And yeah, I ran out of time after getting the replacement battery pack, I just did not have time to sort all of that out. Um, that's a project for after GGBO finishes, I think, to go back and add that piezo in. 
So I think that covers all of the hardware and electronics, the pit guard. So originally this was the wood that I was planning to use for the top of the guitar. So it's a piece of black limber. It was purchased from eBay and it was sold as an acoustic guitar back, well, it's back and side set actually. But yeah, so this was intended as an acoustic guitar piece. It's a really nice piece of black limber with some lovely figuring on it. And I left that with a natural finish. The neck is also a natural, just oil finish, um, using true oil, both of them. The body here was stained in what I think is called a brock burst, something like that. It's um, based on some of the videos from Big D Guitars on YouTube, who's yeah, really good at staining and whatnot. He's the master at that, but yeah, it, it looks really nice. I really love the finish I've got on here. I guess the only other thing to say really is that I really like how this guitar has turned out. It's a million times better than my first kit build. I think the strap behind me is significantly better again, which was my third build. But yeah, I, even so, I am very, very happy with this one. And these pickups in particular are phenomenal. They really do sound amazing. And they've got such versatility with, um, so with the Fishman Fluence, you get pulls here. And what they do is they revoice the pickups. So in this particular case, you've got like, the standard is like a, classic p90 like a 50s p90 when this one is pulled up it's basically like an overwound hot p90 both the bridge and different quite differently voiced naturally anyway and then you've also got this one which is more like a they describe it as more like a strat style single coil i don't ever use it i don't think it's very good but it's there um yeah, and then I've got the freeway switch to give me neck, bridge, and the combination of the two. So I guess the next thing you'll see will be some sound demos of this in action. I'll play a sample of a few different pickups with a few different amps, all running through the spark here. And then we'll, um, yeah, that'll be that. And then I think after all of that, I'll put in footage of the actual build as it goes on. Hey! <laughs> 